Every goal that I've gone for in my career, I've won. So every title in the IFBB Pro League and the NPC Worldwide, I've won now, other than that Olympia title. And that's what keeps me driving every year, is not being world number one yet. Growing up, we never went without. I'm not gonna say I lived on the streets and, and try and say that, but we never had the finer things or we never really went on holidays and stuff like that. And, when I was 16 and I started work um, and I got my first house when I was 18 and I got made redundant and I went through a really low patch and I nearly lost my house and I was, start of every month, I was thinking how I'm gonna make 400 pounds to pay the mortgage and some of the things I had to do, plumbing at the weekend, putting a, a, an outside tap in or fitting a toilet just to be able to pay my mortgage and not lose the house. That feeling of being in that red zone, that was a huge driving force for me to keep pushing and keep working harder. And I found the gym when I was 14 years old. Coming into your teenage years, I start to understand my body, start to get a bit more self-conscious. Obviously, girls were about and, and things like that. So I started through self-confidence issues. There was no goal or there's no competitive side for me when I first started training other than trying to make my physique better and trying to get more self-confident. But I, I needed something to push myself in that gym and I wanted that competitive aspect in the gym and that's where bodybuilding came into it because I could still train, still build self-confidence because my physique is changing, still have that discipline, but then have that end goal and work towards something. So I took the decision to compete. I'd been training seven years by that point and stepping on stage in front of a room full of people, my top off was probably the worst thing in my head at that time. I knew that, that was the biggest thing for me, stepping out of my comfort zone. But I wanted to address that fear and go for it. I didn't tell anybody, I didn't want to put any pressure on myself, so friends, family didn't know what I was doing at the time. And I only signed up the day before the show. Didn't know what show it was, I just knew it was the closest to my home. It turned out to be the UK Nationals, which was one of the biggest shows in the UK at the time. And the world number one had come back to reclaim that title. So yeah, the pressure was immense. And I thought, you know what? What better way to meet your idol than stepping on stage next to him rather than queuing three or four hours in an expo for him? I was literally a wreck, absolute wreck. And I was hiding in this cubicle toilet thinking, what am I doing? My coach at the time came and he said, it's time, you've got to do it. You've got to step out there. And I remember just shaking, couldn't speak to any, anyone. Like the noise was just drowning out. And as I stepped onto stage, I don't know, there's just something came over me like an alter ego. And I just became somebody else. And I just thought, I've, I've done 12 weeks, I've done everything I can, now it's time to fight. And that competitive side of me came out and I walked out. And yeah, I was very fortunate I won that show. And I never really looked back after that. My life changed. Because I won against the world number one at the time, it kind of threw me into the limelight and it started to build my career and my status, should we say, in the competing world. And before I knew it, I think it was about four months after, I was competing at the British finals and that is the biggest amateur show um, in the UK. And I was fortunate enough to win the British finals. I then went on to represent the UK in Spain in the European Arnolds. There was 110 of us on stage because at the time, Men's physique was quite a new class. To my surprise, I won the show and the overall show. So in the space of six months, I became the first ever men's physique IFBB pro from the UK. First ever double champion as a European Arnold Classic champion. First ever British champion, UK national champion. And yeah, like I say, in that year, my life changed dramatically. So after winning the British and winning the Arnold and getting my pro card, there was a lot of expectation going into America from myself and my team because we just basically won everything we'd gone against in the first year. And I was really hopeful and confident that we were gonna do some damage in America. And I remember my first show, Culver City, LA, there was 40, 40 odd uh, athletes and I placed dead last. I didn't even get um, a call out. And it was so demoralizing because people in the audience even felt sorry for me. They were shouting my, uh, my number out. And, no disrespect to the older athletes, but we even had masters, which were over 40s in there, who even they got a call out and I didn't. And it just really hurt. Like I must admit, my, my whole world had shattered. I spoke to the head judge 
and I'm not gonna <laughs> say names, but he basically looked me up and down and he said, this doesn't work over here and it never will do. And in any other situation, that would have been a different outcome, but because I was so distraught and shattered, I just head down and walked out and I just didn't even confront it or anything. And I was, went to In-N-Out Burger with my coach. I remember like it was yesterday. And this guy, this random guy, and I'll thank him, whoever he is, I don't know who he was, but came up to me and said, look, don't get disheartened. He said, you've got an amazing physique and you have great potential, but just go to the East Coast and compete on the East Coast. Your look will suit that uh, audience a lot better. I remember saying thank you to him and just kind of dismissed it. And I sat with my coach and he says, we've had a good run and we were both looking to just end it there. But if I'd have gone on and just stopped there and then, it would have absolutely broke me as a person. Three or four months later, went over to the East Coast and we won the Pittsburgh Pro, we won Miami uh, and Atlanta. And I say, went to the Olympia and placed fourth in that year. So it was a big turning point for me because it was just that belief in don't give up with hurdles, obviously come your way. And I very nearly did. As I've grown up, and obviously I'm now married, I've got two kids, uh, things had to change because I wasn't willing to sacrifice being a good dad. Uh, my dad wasn't around growing up um, and I never want to have that for my kids. But I always vowed to be the best dad that I could be first, be the best husband that I could be be the best family man that I could be, and then obviously be the best bodybuilder that I could be. And it would always be in that order. It's all about balance. It's being able to compete and uh, dedicate everything to your craft, i.e. eating when you can, training when you can, sleeping when you can. But then also, when I step off stage, it then goes back to them. Whenever I get a setback, i.e. if I don't win the Olympia, that fire and that drive of that feeling sitting in, in an out burger, I never want to feel that again. Game day, the morning of 2023, Mr. Olympia, here in Orlando. We are ready to go. As you can see, tanned up, I'm dressed up, ready for battle. Two meals there and some asparagus. That is because I'm gonna to go to the expo after and I wanna make sure I'm still on track for finals this evening as well. Here we've got almond butter, rice cakes, I'm full anyway, I've had two big meals already today, oats, um, eggs, rice cakes, lots of fats, nut butter, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but that is for backstage grazing because shows never go on time. So we always just gotta make sure we don't flatten off and we keep our stomachs flat, but full. Hello, <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm alright, yeah. <laughs> Don't be crying. <laughs> Are you crying because you think we have to go again next year? <laughs> <laughs> amazing to be able to experience what I've experienced and go through it with the family and yeah 
I'm just over the moon. And I, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for all the support. Thank you to everyone who not only believed me in me in this prep, but in my whole career. Like people believed in me nine years ago, 10 years ago when I first started, and they still do to this day. And that means a lot, it really does. And I may not have been able to do it without the support of everybody around me. So yeah, massive thank you to all you guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope I can represent the sport in a way in which it should be represented. No bullshit, no fighting and arguing and bickering. I want it to be a positive year. I want it to be where, yeah, there's just happy, we're building the sport, building the industry, building men's physique. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to the IFBB Pro League. Thank you to NPC World uh, Wide. Thank you to the Mr. Olympia. Uh, all the federations have made this happen. But most of all, thank you to you guys at home. I really appreciate it. Men's Physique Olympia champion. Woo! Only took nine years. <laughs> Thanks, guys.